Well, hello there, friend. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. Andrew Najera here at Drew Installs Hardware. Uh, today we're going to be installing a flush bolt. We're going to be installing a top and bottom flush bolt. What is a flush bolt? Well, a flush bolt is a piece of hardware that secures the inactive leaf on a pair of doors. Uh, that'd be like a pair of doors where you got a handle set where the uh, doors don't operate independently, but you have an active one that opens first and then the inactive one that opens second. Hey, but the inactive leaf got to, has to close first, you know what I'm saying? So what goes around comes around. Here we have an Ives product. It's got a top and bottom flush bolt. The top flush bolt uh, is, um, retracts just with gravity so you'll see the plunger there you just click it it goes up and down and it comes back down with gravity the bottom flush bolt's got a spring built into it so that it pushes down and then the spring will bring it back up so that's what we're working with these are hollow metal doors so you have different flush bolts for hollow metal doors. This is a FB31. Man, I should have, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah, um, this is how they come packaged for these hollow metal doors. And uh, these are really fun to install. You saw me at the beginning there. I take a little bit of time uh, to look at the prep in the door. Looking at the prep in the door is really important. Um, all the doors are built differently. They all come a little different. You'll see me, I'm trying to dry fit it there. And I'm noticing the prep's a little tight. And that's a common thing to happen. So I'm gonna try to just spread the skin of that door just a little bit, just a little bit. Give me a little bit of room for that uh, flush bolt to sit in there. Really nice. And that's really important too, especially on the uh, kinds of flush bolts like this one that have a really thin uh, metal cover plate. Man, I see so many times that thin metal cover plate's all jacked up because it didn't take time to um, kind of clean up the preps. You see here, I'm setting the bottom flush bolt in place. I have a screwdriver holding one end of it up so that I can kind of see me threading the rod through the bottom and then you start twisting it into the prep in the bottom of that flush bolt. And once it's threaded, then I can remove that screwdriver, let it sit in its prep, and then um, continue screwing that bottom flush bolt in. As far as spacing goes, I'll use sometimes measure the opening. Sometimes I'll see if the opening is getting a flush bolt, or I mean, sorry, a threshold. That kind of determines how much I have that bottom bolt sticking out before it gets activated. And, uh, yeah, and this is, uh, with these automatic flush bolts, the way they get activated is the other, the other leaf, the active leaf, um, basically hits those activators, pushing that bolt down. So it's pretty, sometimes the, uh, um, sometimes your spacing there can be critical. And, uh, some models you can adjust without having to drop the door. Some models to adjust that bottom flush bolt length you're going to end up having to drop the door and we try to avoid that as much as possible now i'm opening up those screw packs and uh yeah okay this gets four screws and i see a lot of uh kind of inconsistencies on these holes the way they're prepped where they're located so i usually i, I start with the screw holes that are going to move that thing where i want it to be tighten those first and then tighten the other ones after now, if you've never done it you might not know what that means but you know those there can be some inconsistencies there on the prep so there's um the bottom let's see what i'm doing now i'm looking at the spacing i got about a quarter inch of that bolt sticking out of the bottom and i think that's what i want now I'm looking, yeah, to fit that cover plate in those little gaps. I'm just trying to see, do I have space for the cover plate? And all your doors are going to be a little different. On this one, the preps move around quite a bit. So, it, so that's good as far as uh, me getting my stuff in and it looking good. Uh, but, you know, it's all, they're all going to be different depending on 
the specifications that the doors are built to. <clears throat> and yeah, this is the part where I see a lot of kind of ugly installs where um, that's not sitting down in there just because there wasn't room for it in the beginning. Hey, if there's not room for it in the beginning, there's not going to be room for it after you whack it with a hammer to try to get it to fit in there. So, you know, let's make sure you got room for it. And then it's got two little tinier um, screws for that cover plate. Man, that looks nice. Yeah, love installing these. So much fun. And then you got a double keeper here. And it's always nice when uh, the screw hole when it's always nice when the screw holes at the top and the bottom of the door are prepped sometimes they're not prepped i don't know why lately they're all coming prepped and there's two countersunk holes in that double keeper plate that you put the screws into and boom shakalaka <laughs> boom shakalaka there you go hey your bottom flush bolts installed congratulations let's go do it to the top hey don't yeah don't savor that victory too long we got we got work to do let's go to the top all right good working on the top i'm gonna do the same thing you see me do the same thing i did at the bottom see how that drops i'm trying to give myself a little window there to see see what i'm doing you saw at the bottom one i use the screwdriver that works really well you can just hold it up too with your hands if you want to and uh i think i'm give me a little better look oh there it is so I'm I'm actually pushing the actuator so that it comes the uh, threaded or the uh, part I'm screwing into comes up and then once it just gets started it can put it in place and continue tightening the rod and uh, yeah it's looking good and that's gonna get four I think those are 832 combo screws um that's what's going to get screwed in first and then uh then i'll get the cover plate it'll get a double keeper at the top again also and yeah it's looking good and on the top so as far as your um, length of your rod at the top you don't you don't want the top one sticking out above the door at all that would be that could lead to problems that could cause some problems like the door closing and then not being able to open again seen it done it don't do it yeah so your top uh what am i doing did i mess something up okay no i'm good we're looking good yeah but the top flush bolt you just want to be flush with the top of the door and maybe even it could be under you know it doesn't have to be perfectly flush it could be a little under because uh, if you think about it, um, in a perfect world, you're just going to have an eighth inch gap at the head of your door. So if that, as soon as that bolt moves up more than an eighth of an inch, it's going to go into the strike prep in the frame. And so, so it doesn't have to be sticking out of the door. It, it needs to just be flush with the top of the door. The bottom one, on the other hand, it could be a half inch higher. It, it could be need to get thrown a uh, three eighths of an inch a half an inch um before uh it's going to get to what it's going to lock into if it's a dust proof strike or the ground with the little uh, strike plate whatever um if it's a threshold then that threshold comes up so it doesn't have to throw quite as far but you see why you're going to want to have the bottom one usually sticking down a little bit more and here since i had spread those earlier to allow room for our stuff they look a little spread so i give it a little tap and holy magic magic of moving metal straighten back up look beautiful well what am i why haven't i swung this door yet what am i waiting for oh hey there it is all swung nice that is looking good let's see what it looks like Okay, I'm noticing the strike plate in the head of the frame is backwards. That's a pretty common thing I see. I don't, I mean, I don't know if they come out backwards on purpose or if it's just happenstance on how it comes out, but it's a reversible strike plate in the head of these frames when it comes out like that. So you can switch it to be 
either side. Super awesome, super convenient. And you see those sheet rockers got a little, they uh, just, you know, they did their thing. They did what they're supposed to do. Tuck that sheet rock right down into that frame. I just wanted to make sure that uh, that sheet rock wasn't going to hold up the um, flush bolt from going up in there. So it got a little bit of it out of the way. Flip that reversible strike plate around now. It's on the right side. Check this out. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. We love that. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we got the... Uh, we got to put some rub plates on the active leaf. I think that's what we're going to do next. I think we're going to put the rub plates on. And maybe I'm just going to step back and admire this beautiful pair of doors. Our guys set the frames on a previous trip. I got the pr privilege of being able to swing doors into beautiful frames. Man, they do good work. Here I got a stack of rub plates like poker chips, man. Stack them up. Yeah, tried to do these like production style when possible. So uh, the rub plate is going to be installed on the active door. And I'm just marking right now where I need to put those, where the active door makes contact uh, with the inactive door. And uh, uh, yeah, usually I just do a pencil mark. What am I doing here? Yeah, just, I just put a pencil mark. Even just closing the door sometimes, you can see exactly where those guys are, depending on how the paint is. Oh, and I'm getting triggered right now. Oh my gosh, we only have one kick plate on. Okay, I've just been triggered in many different ways. Not only do I just have one kick plate on one of the doors of the pair, the kick plate is not screwed off. There's only two screws in it holding it up. Yeah, I don't know if I want to make it through the rest of this video looking at this. I don't know how I made it through this work day. No, I know exactly why it's like that. But man, I don't like it. Okay. Come on, Drew. Come on. Focus. Focus on what's important. These rub plates. Getting these rub plates on is the most important thing. So I'm marking the rub plates, making sure that the screw, the top screw is not going to fall right where the... Uh, um, actuator is uh, just because they can get hung up if the screws there and uh, make sure it's above it so I'm gonna drill these holes an eighth of an inch uh, wood doors these are simpler here um, to use the supplied screw I have to drill and tap and I like using the supplied screw because um, uh, the um, the heads kind of need to set in a little bit so other screws I have would be kind of like a button, a little bit more like a button head that kind of stick out. And depending on how much space you have between the doors, maybe you can use those no problem. Oh my gosh, here I'm tapping with one hand. That's an 832 tap. Man, that was brave. I used, I always would do two hands there. I don't know, I was trying to show off, I guess. Now we're gonna put the rub plates on. Um, this is, uh, yeah, we're almost there kind of boring putting rub plates on but hey it's got to be done and if they need to if you need them to actuate those plungers a little bit more to throw those bolts you can put little shims behind them and we're just about there man thanks so much for watching this video with me i just want to take a second and say thanks so much to our customers we work for we work for some awesome people and also man i work with some great guys they're the, really the best i'm very lucky and uh man Working with great guys, working with great customers. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, man, thank you, guy. And then you watching these videos, thank you so much. Um, I got more videos coming your way. Hey, it's a good looking pair of doors. So uh, hopefully these videos are helping you out or at least providing a little entertainment. So until next time, uh, happy hardwearing.